Okay, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk a little bit about the process of denudation. And specifically, I want to get into a particular type of weathering process. Now, denudation is the combined process of erosion, mass wasting, and weathering. All of these processes help to lower the land, help to cause the land to be worn down. In the case of erosion, the land is being worn down by moving agents such as ice, wind, water, wave. In the case of mass wasting, mass wasting requires a slope. Mass wasting is the downslope movement of materials along a slope as a result of the force of gravity. Weathering. Weathering is the breaking up of rock in situ. In situ simply means in the same place. In other words, weathering does not move the material. Weathering is simply causing the materials to break up. If the materials move after that, it might move as a result of erosion or mass wasting if a slope is involved. Weathering is of two broad categories, chemical weathering, where the mineral composition of the rock is altered, or mechanical weathering, where the rock is breaking up, but the composition is not being changed. Another, another term for mechanical weathering is physical weathering. Now, today we just want to focus on a particular type of mechanical weathering. So some of the mechanical weathering processes includes, includes frost shattering, pressure release, and thermal expansion. Thermal expansion is also called insulation weathering. Now, for pressure release and thermal expansion, when the rocks break up, they usually break off layer by layer. And we use the term exfoliation to describe this way in which the rocks break off or peel off layer by layer. We call it uh, onion peeling. Now, thermal expansion commonly occurs in desert region. As the map shows, most of the desert regions occur in areas close to latitude 30 degrees. Now, at latitude 30 degrees, air is sinking. And as air sinks, it will warm up. And as it warms, the relative humidity decreases, which means that it gets more and more difficult for the air to reach to its dew point. As a result of that, it is difficult for condensation to take place. And if condensation does not take place, then the water vapor will not change to liquid and therefore clouds will not form very easily. In the absence of clouds, then there is going to be an 
absence of precipitation. So most desert areas have very little uh, precipitation. And in turn, when there is very little precipitation, there is also very little vegetation. What that means, therefore, is that the rocks are going to be more exposed to the elements. There will not be a lot of vegetation cover or even a deep soil covering the rocks. So the rocks are generally exposed. And because of the fact that there are very little clouds in the sky, then it means that there will be more sunshine and the sunshine, the heat of the sun will now affect the rocks. So what happens is that during the day, in the absence of the clouds, the heat of the sun is concentrated on the surface of rocks. The reason it is concentrated on the surface of rocks is because rocks are not good conductors of heat. So the heat is not going to pass quickly through the rocks. So with the sun's heat concentrated on the surface of the rock, the rock will begin to expand. As the rock expands, it is going to develop some cracks. And these cracks are going to develop parallel to the surface. Parallel means that it, the cracks develop in the same direction of the surface. Now, when it gets later in the day and the area is no longer uh, facing the sun and receiving insulation from the sun, the surface is also going to lose its heat rapidly. And in the absence of clouds to help to absorb some of that heat that is being released, the area is going to be cooled down very rapidly. So what we see is an extreme difference between the temperature during the day and the temperature during the night. In other words, we can say that there is a large diurnal or daily range of temperature. That is, when we compare the highest temperature for the day and the lowest temperature for the day, there is going to be a big difference in desert regions. So during the nights, what happens is that the surface that had expanded during the day is now going to contract. And as it contracts, it is going to develop cracks perpendicular to the surface. Perpendicular meaning that, they're, that the, these cracks form a right angle to the surface. So remember, during the day, we had horizontal cracks, which were parallel to the surface. And now we are having vertical cracks at night, which are perpendicular to the surface. This process will be repeated from day to day. So during the day, we are expecting the surface to be heated up and expanded and parallel cracks develop. And at night, we are expecting it to be very cold and the surface will contract and vertical cracks will develop. And so 
the, the, the rocks in the desert regions are constantly expanding and contracting, expanding and contracting. And therefore, what will happen is that the rocks will begin to peel off layer by layer like an onion, all right? So exfoliation is taking place. And so the rock is breaking up and is getting smaller and smaller. This is what we talk about when we talk about thermal expansion or insulation weathering. In our upcoming video, we will look at another type of physical weathering. Thank you.